in terms of Donovan Mitchell, getting back to that, and that's become a storyline with Utah. We knew they were going to go full rebuild with this organization, this basketball team. You look at guy Donovan Mitchell. To me, Jay, will is that people know him, but don't know him on a national scale because Utah has not been a team that's won to the level that a lot of people thought they should have won. I wonder what kind of price tag that he's going to bring if they're going to be serious about this, where he's going to go, and then he can he make that jump from being a star to a superstar outside of the NBA realm when it comes to Donovan Mitchell. Well, I think he can. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm a huge fan of of Donovan. I've watched him play since he was at Louisville, and he wasn't a shooter. Mm -hmm. He was a slasher. He was. And he wasn't the primary option on their team. So, you know, his father, Donovan Mitchell Sr., is uh, director of personnel for the New York Mets. So he spends a lot of time in this area, kind of grew up in the Greenwich, Connecticut area, very familiar with the Knicks, one of his home favorite teams. <clears throat> but, I look, I, I think he is on the verge of superstardom, and he has that type of talent. I mean, the guy's numbers, just look up the numbers itself. I mean, those are superstar-like numbers in this league. A lot of it has been fit. A lot of it has not worked out. Um, you, you've seen his head coach, Quinn Snyder, de decide to not renew his contract to go a different place. They are in rebuild mode. So if you got, you know, those, what was it, four uh, first-round picks, five players for Rudy Gobert, you're going to at least need something comparable. But sure. you understand that Danny Ainge and company – for him, he hasn't demanded a trade. He's not that type of, type of individual. But they're going to need something comparable like that because they are going into rebuild mode, and they need draft picks. They need selections. So if the right package comes across the table, you can best believe Danny Angel, those guys are going to look at it and take it seriously. Yeah, and they, as they should, though. And I think for him, why waste your talent in Utah in the end? And, and, and I'm not saying – I'm not sliding the Utah Jazz. Maybe they will be – NBA champions at some point in time in the near future mm -hmm. or in the distant future. But as of right now, they're not a basketball team. You know, they moved on from Rudy Gobert. Now Donovan Mitchell essentially is available if you have the right package. And for him, at some point, the realization will set in that it's probably good for him to move. And he will approach the front office and say, you know what, it's probably time for me to move on. Let's figure something out. We still got a long ways to go. We still got several months to the season start. So sure. the right team come along with the right package. But when you start talking about trading guys that could potentially become superstars, it requires a lot. Do you want to deplete your roster mm -hmm. to be able to do that or your draft picks of the future to be able to do that? And that's what it's going to take. Danny Ainge understands about rebuilding. It's a different kind of rebuild The Utah Jazz, unlike what he – did with the Boston Celtics, and we saw how that was able to bear fruit without him with that team getting to the NBA Finals this past season. But even he said, look, it, we can't just be in the middle, especially in the loaded Western Conference. That keeps getting better and better and better. And, oh, by the way, that Golden State Warriors team back on the top of that heat, Jay Will, that's something that Danny has had to look and say, we got to think about the future because Golden State is going to get older sooner than us trying to contend for a championship in Utah, staying the course at the way that we're trying to do. So D. Mitch works out with a guy named Chris Brickley who has a, a, a company here in New York called Black Ops that he does with uh, Carmelo Anthony, which, you know, all the big-time players come to New York and work out. You've seen pictures of LeBron James. There was a picture down of Chris and Donovan and Jimmy Butler down in Miami celebrating Chris Brickley's birthday mm -hmm. down that way. So people started circulating around rumors on that. And, and look, the, the, the Heat culture is an incredible culture, right, for a guy like Donovan Mitchell to be a part of. So I see that. But, Freddie and Key, this comes back to me about this is what New York has been waiting for. True. This is what the Knicks have been waiting for. So when you see them acquire all these draft picks, when you see them make the move for Jalen Brunson at $110 million, the perfect backcourt mate for him is a guy like Donovan Mitchell. That is the culture of your team. Right. You have the draft picks. I'm not saying you have all on-the-court assets to get it done, but you have the capital to be aggressive in a deal nature like this. Th this is one where you're looking at Leon Rose and you're saying – you got to get this one, Leon. You got to get this one right. He's also a CAA client. Mm -hmm. And I went through the list of all the CAA ties in the Knicks organization. We, we joked around Jay. with Clutch Sports and everything with the Lakers key. Th this is the one that the Knicks have to get. Jay, help me out here because, I, I, I mean, my brain right now. So Let me do my brain. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, when you look at it, right, in the NBA over the last – decade or so 
what guard has been traded outside of Drew Holiday? What guard has been traded to go on and win an NBA title? Because all the ones that I, everybody I keep thinking of are three, four, five type guys that have been traded and gone on to win championships, most notably, obviously, Anthony Davis. But is there a guard? Because I can't find one outside of Drew Holiday. I mean, CP3 got close to winning the title. No, I said win. I, I know, close. I know. I, yeah, I was yeah. going through the list of them. Mm-hmm. Um, With the Clippers, right? Well, because, yeah, he came from the OKC, OKC and then going, obviously, to Phoenix. Mm-hmm. That's a tough one. Yeah, that's a tough one. Like, guards of that size, like ones and twos? Yeah, and, yeah. yeah I, I just, yeah, because cause yeah. I, I also look at that. And I know we got a break here, but I also look at that. I'm like, as I'm sitting here and assessing the situation, I'm like, because if you move him to Miami. Yeah, but Miami has scoring drought sometimes, and he would fix that for them, especially depending upon the, what you had to give up. Especially in the backcourt. But you're giving up Tyler Hero, so that takes away your depth. Because I'm not, there's no way I'm giving up Donovan Mitchell without getting Tyler Hero and a ton of assets back. Mm-hmm. Either way, all of a sudden, Donovan Mitchell has become a buzz name, not named Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving when it comes to the offseason in the NBA. It does and, make things interesting for your Lakers, though, Key. Yes, it does. Don't worry well, about we, my Lakers. You keep oh, them out your mouth. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Here we go. Let's, okay. not, let's not do that. The last time we heard something like that, all hell broke loose on Twitter. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.